Hey folks, Roy here again with another Fosse Audio Gear discussion. Not so much a review, rather comparison of a modified amp versus a stock amp with regards to thermals. So there's been a few, and I mean just a few mentions on the interwebs where folks have had their Fosse Audio Class D amps shut down after listening for a period of time. And that's likely due to a thermal shutdown. It's of my opinion that there are a few key factors that play a role in this. One, they're using very low efficiency speakers. Two, the environment could be high temperatures, for example, outside or in a non-air conditioned area, or poor airflow. They've got the amp in a, in a cabinet. Three, they're also running a passive sub hooked up to the sub terminals on the back which energizes the second chip. Now, that isn't bad or wrong. That's just using the device as designed, but it does, it does contribute to higher thermals. And finally, four, possible poor contact or interference with the amp's case and the Class D chip aluminum plate, along with poor thermal compound application. Now, this would be quality control miss which there isn't a company out there that doesn't have these from time to time. So, each of these Fosse BT30D Pros right here in front of us, the one to the left is modified, one to the right is stock. They have two TPA3255 chips, Texas Instrument audio chips. One drives the two satellite speakers and the other drives the subwoofer, I think. They have a voltage operating range of 18 to 55 volts DC and Fosse provides a stock 32 volt supply, which I have over there. But they also offer a 48 volt option. And I believe they might actually have a silicon based one and a GAN or gallium nitride. And what is that you may ask? Well, look it up. It's non-silicon base, higher pow power density packed into the same space. Also, Driving the chips at higher voltage provides better performance due to the ability to provide better power to the speakers, which can limit clipping, distortion, etc. Do yourself a favor, research this aspect. Each TPA3255 also has a thermal cutoff of 155C. That's what I believe is happening, is in these cases that are mentioned, it's hitting that 155. So, test setup. I'm gonna be running a passive, now hear this, 10 inch subwoofer, it's eight ohm. I don't know the sensitivity. And these uh, RTI-4 Polks, they are eight ohm and they're 89 dB sensitivity. There's another one over here. Same setup will be run on each of these devices. As far as the controls go, well, before I get to the controls, I'm gonna be using a FLIR and iPad to record the thermals on the cases. Starting with the on, unmodified, the one to the right, BT30D Pro, before playing a song list over Bluetooth from the iPad. Then with all the controls set to 12 o'clock, that includes the volume, play the song list, and then after that completes, which is about 30 minutes, it's gonna be the same for you know both, both measurements. Take thermal case reading with the FLIR and then finally bump that volume up to three quarter. Now my experience I've been using the 30D for a while uh, I started with the 20 the 20D here I very rarely ever went to 50 percent uh, just below 50 percent would be normal listening volume for me in my space but man pumping it up to 30 it's just way too loud for a den an office I have a feeling that if you went all the way to 100%, you're going to start getting clipping, especially possibly if you're using the 32 volt. Then I'll do the same with this thermally modified case. However, without having a thermocouple directly on the chip, it's hard to say what the safe limit on the case would be. I would wager we'd probably want to stay below 130C on any point on that case because you know it's well north of that directly on the chip. It'll be interesting to see how hot the heat sink on the modified 30D 
which I'll show you guys that real quick here. You see I cut a vent at the top there. You see the two capacitors left and right there. These are little cherry standoffs here so that it makes clearance for this heat sink, which is directly on that aluminum plate that makes contact with the chips that are mounted on the underside of this version of AMP. So with that, we're gonna get into next the test phase. Okay, temperatures are set to Celsius. This is the before test, before playing the music, the playlist I mentioned. And this is the top center of the case. Now I'm going to flip it over. I'm gonna to try to flip it over anyway. And let's get that here, right there where that contact is. There's the bottom. Okay. This is now at 30 minutes of playtime, 50% volume, using the 48 volt power supply, unmodified BT30D Pro by Fossi Audio. And we're looking at the center of the case. You can see that the left side is a lot warmer than the right. Go back up right here. Look at that, isn't that really cool? I bet those two orange dots are the chips. There we're sitting at close to 40 C there at the center of the case. Again, 30 minutes, 50% volume. Okay, here's an additional 10 minutes of three quarter volume. Unmodified BT30D Pro, 48 volt power supply. Center of the case there. Let's go to the bottom. I don't remember what it measured there. If that's 40, you know, it drops off a couple of degrees C around the perimeter. Next up, modified case, which will be that guy there with the same playtime and volume settings. Okay, here's the BT30D modified case, top center before running music and I'm turning it over here and putting it right on that heat sink there. I think it's gonna be higher than 40 C because it's going to pull more energy off that aluminum plate that's connected to the chips. 48 volt as well. Okay, this is the same playlist 30 minutes later, same volume settings, tone control settings. This is the BT30D Pro from Fossi Audio, modified. Yep, 34 there, let's turn it over. Let's see what's going on underneath. Oh boy, oh yeah. Now you notice it's concentrated at the heat sink. I believe the non-modified on the case was around 41, 42 C. All right, here we are playing at three quarter volume for the same interval for the previous test. And we're at 35 here, not a lot of difference. In fact, I think that's about the same. And then underneath here, I think it was like 51. Yeah, we're 52 now. Okay, this is with the stock 32 volt power supply, about 32 C and the bottom. Yeah. It's definitely less, um, man, this was yesterday. I thought it was 51C, if I remember correctly. So we're looking at about an eight degree drop using the 32 volt power supply. All right, and finally here, the stock case with the 32 volt power supply. 34, close to 34. Okay, quick wrap up on the FLIR observations, and while I do this, I'll cycle through some of the modification build images. These are top and bottom average temperatures. So the stock BT30D Pro with a 48 volt DC power supply, idle before use temp was 26C, 30 minutes of music at 50% volume, 38.5C, and then finally 10 minutes of music at 75% volume, 38C. Now the modified BT30D Pro with the 48 volt power supply, idle before temp was 28C, 
50% volume, 43C, and then three quarter volume was 43 and a half C. The modified BT30D Pro with the 32 volt power supply after 30 minutes at 50% volume was 37C. The modified BT30D Pro with the 32 volt power supply after 30 minutes at 50% volume was 32 and a half C. So the key takeaways on this data, the difference between 50% volume and 75% volume in all cases is really negligible. Using the 48 volt power supply puts about a six degree increase in temps. The modified case average temps were four degrees warmer, likely due to the concentrated thermal energy on the heat sinks. Is this good or bad? I lean a little towards good, as I feel it's probably pulling more thermal energy off of those chips. So in conclusion, it is of my opinion that the Fossi Audio BT30D Pro, while runs hot on the stock case around 38 degrees C, it suggests that it's quite a ways away from the 155 C thermal cutoff of the TPA3255 chips. Does this stock behavior warrant modifying the case as I did to help thermals? The short answer is no. This being said, it's likely the reason the aftermarket heat sink that I added sits at 43C, over four degrees more than the stock, suggest, which suggests it's pulling more thermal energy from the chips, which helps them operate at some degree, no pun intended, better. So in the end, because I have the tooling and the gear to do so, I would likely modify mine. Whether you use the stock 32 volt or 48 volt power supply, showing only about a six degree bump in temps again, the odds of introducing premature failure of the chips or thermal shutdown are very low. As with just about all electronics though, thermal energy heat is the enemy. For those instances where folks have reported shutdowns, there must be one or more of the criteria I previously mentioned causing it to happen. Now I'm going to display the data here, so pause if necessary. I hope this video was informative for you. Stay tuned to the next oddball review or discussion here on my channel. Cheers.